Today, we're deep in the Welsh mountains at one of the oldest trail centres in the UK, Cody Brennan. In this video, we're riding the well-known and popular Minotaur Trail. The Minotaur is a multi-loop blue trail. By that, I mean that you can make this trail as long or short as you like, depending on your fitness and interest. Loop 1 is 3 kilometres long. Adding on loop 2 makes it 5 kilometres. Loops 1, 2 and 3 are 9 kilometres, and the full loop 4 is 12 kilometres and I'm going to show you all of these today. So, as I tell you about the trail, let's get cracking. It's easy enough to find the start from the car park, just head through the large silver gateway and take a soft left. The guidebook says that this is a fun trail filled with swooping berms, rollers and curbsized drops. Being a blue trail, it doesn't have any huge climbs or overly steep downhill. It's more of an exploration trail. The first couple of sections are quite mellow, with things getting harder the further you ride. That being said, I'm riding my Cube Stereo today. And yes, I'm a little overbiked for this trail, but because there are no huge climbs, it didn't cause me much bother. But you really don't need a bike like this to ride the Minotaur. On a hardtail or shorter, snappier bike, you can really get the most out of this trail. And for this reason, the Minotaur is great for younger riders or people new to mountain biking too. As the trail guide says, Loop 4 of the Minotaur Trail now visits the spectacular waterfalls, an old disused gold mine and a gunpowder works. This is what I mean by it being an exploration trail. You don't have to ride it as quick as possible because there's plenty to take in and enjoy. But you should also keep your eyes open for hints and sightings of the Minotaur himself. So one thing I love about this Minotaur Trail is these little details, the little hoof prints from the Minotaur. So he'll be making an appearance a few times in the trail, so we'll keep our eyes out. That's right, if you keep your eyes open and explore your surroundings, you can find loads of hidden gems like this. There he is. So this first loop of the Minotaur is a great way to experience what the trails are like here, have a warm up and have an explore. The trail is very much a flow trail. The route wiggles and winds its way through the world's countryside with never a still moment. Whether that's moving around trees, pedalling over little bumps, short descents, or just stopping to admire your surroundings. If you take it for what it is, you can't go wrong. One of the most noticeable parts of this first loop are the multiple switchbacks. These weave their way down the gradual hill in a uniform fashion. With a tight berm at each end, you get plenty of chance to practice your cornering. On this first section, this is about as technical as it gets. It's certainly not the fastest piece of trail ever created. And as you can see, I'm putting in plenty of pedals to try and maintain some speed, but it's all good practice. After you've made your way down the zigzags, you get treated to another flowing section, this time with a bit more speed. But again, keep your eyes peeled, because of course, you have another sighting of you know who. Yep, it's the Minotaur. So after this, you pop out of the end of the first loop. From this point, you can head to the right back to the visitor center, but I pushed on to the next loop. Okay, so this is the start of loop two. Loop two is similar to loop one in the fact that it keeps moving through the forest with gradual ups and downs. The trail guide says that the Minotaur gets progressively harder the more loops you add on. The profile of this section is a ride of two halves. The first of which is spent steadily climbing, but don't let that put you off. As I said before, the climbs aren't too taxing. Even for me on my enduro bike, this is a steady climb and it's kind of fun. Especially these ones which generally undulate as they go. It's also worth noting that the whole trail is well surfaced and because it caters for all types of riders, there are no natural sections or unsurfaced trail. This means that it can be ridden in all kinds of weather. So once you make it to the top of the hill, you sneak past the Minotaur climbing out from behind the wall and then you start your winding descent down. Like the climbs, the descents aren't a harsh gradient. They flow down maintaining a gentle speed and making most of the terrain, which includes a few small turns, lumps and bumps. You of course still have to pedal in some of the sections, but the trail is still genuinely pointing downwards at this point. Like the first loop, there are no real features as such on loop 2, but I did manage to get both tyres off the ground towards the bottom of the hill. So once you've made it down the hill and you're at the end of the second section, the return trail to the visitor center peels off to the right, but I carried on forwards to start loop three. The ride out of loop three continues on single track. When choosing how long to make this trail, you should think about your plans for the day. 
Today I'm riding the Minotaur as a bit of a warm up before heading off to do some of the longer and harder trails. The longer trails are designed to test your fitness, so although a warm up trail is always a good idea, you don't want to overdo it and end up struggling halfway around one of the longer trails. So pick your Minotaur loop carefully. If you're heading off to do a longer trail, I recommend only riding loops 1, 2 or 3. Loop 3 gives you enough of a casual adventure, a decent warm up on the flowing single track and a few climbs that don't use up all your energy. It is worth noting that the climbs on this loop are a bit longer and steeper than the previous loops, so that's something to factor into your thinking. As long-time fans of the channel will know, I've ridden this trail before, a couple of times in fact. I remember the last time I rode this section of trail. It was in a very different scenario. It was the Fox Antifreeze, a multi-lap enduro challenge that took me just under three hours of constant riding to complete. It was an epic challenge that took us all over the Cody Brennan trails. Luckily, today's ride is a bit more casual than that. Although it's fun to tick off the kilometers as you ride, it's a good trail to stop and enjoy the scenery, even if you are being constantly followed by the menacing Minotaur. So it's probably apparent that the majority of Loop 3 is a steady climb. There isn't really a whole lot of downhill on here, but there is a short bit of descending towards the end. This short section of downhill is a welcome addition. After spending the last 10 minutes of climbing, it's good to let the legs have a little bit of a rest. You will of course have to add in a few pedal strokes in places, but it's interesting and it flows nice. It's just not as long as you might like. So coming around the last few corners marks the end of loop three. One more loop to go. The start of loop four sends you off the single track and onto the road. In fact, this entire loop is pretty much all on fire road. This loop is more about the sightseeing than it is about riding cool features. This also happens to be the biggest uphill on the trail. I remember riding this trail a few years back and I also remember the amazing views of the waterfall at the top. It was a great place to stop and have a snap. Pretty awesome. But unfortunately things were a bit different today. Wow. The last time I came here this fence wasn't here. It was a bit more impressive. Oh, I'm slightly gutted. So last time I came, this fence wasn't here. There's this little plateau that we sat on and had lunch. And you could really see how awesome this waterfall is. But with the fence, it sort of takes away from the uh, wilderness aspect of it a bit, but still pretty cool. So as I continued on the trail, I was feeling slightly deflated. <clears throat> I started to make my way all the way back down the fire road on the other side of the waterfall. It was fair to say that I'm a little bit gutted. Now I totally understand why the fence has been put there. It's a steep drop, lots of water and a big potential for accidents. But I definitely felt like it spoiled the view and aesthetic of it. Was it worth the ride all the way up here just to see a fence? For me, probably not. But then I have explored this trail before. So the route back through all the sections is best described as a fire road pedal interspersed with short sections of single track every now and then. But the single track sections are pretty good fun. This section is faster and more winding than the previous descents on the way out. But you can still take it slowly if you need. This is a nice downhill filled with lumps, bumps and corners designed to maximise your fun. Yes, you will still have to add in a few pedal strokes on the flatter parts, but that hardly spoils the vibe. As the way out through all the loops was filled with plenty of gradual climbs, the way back has a few more descents. But it's not all good times in single track, because I was surprised to find that the majority of the return journey is just fire roads. But don't worry, I'm not going to be showing you any more footage of me slogging along a fire road. I'll leave the boring bits to your imagination. We'll focus on the more enjoyable riding. The next piece of single track is a steep climb up through the winding woods. The trail here gets a bit tight in places, so watch out for your handlebars. As far as climbs go, this one is actually pretty good. You definitely have to keep active on your bike, and like all the best climbs, this one has a descent afterwards. This short descent is a really flowy piece of trail. It wiggles around nicely on the smooth terrain, and again, there's an option to get your wheels off the ground if you're that way inclined. It certainly feels good to be flowing downhill again. For a blue descent, this isn't bad and you can really get some speed up if you like. But be warned, this trail isn't really built for speed 
and some of the corners are less than accommodating and I almost got caught out. A couple of extra berms wouldn't go amiss. So after this little piece of downhill, you're back on the pedaling all the way back to the trail center. Like I said, this is a trail for exploring. If you're someone looking to spend a bit of time out in the woods, surrounded by nature and a little bit of quirkiness, then this is the trail for you. If you're looking for a flat out action packed adventure, then Cody Brennan has plenty of other trails that tick that box. So coming along the final section of trail, you make your way back to the silver loop where your adventure began. And there we have it, the Minotaur Trail. It's a good fitness or warm up loop with options to make it just the right length for your needs. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Remember to subscribe to the channel for more biking content and I'll see you in the comments below.